Hey everybody, welcome to my channel, Creative Katie here. And today we have an art journal tutorial. Here's a sneak peek. My goals for this page was to use yellow, teal, and gray and to use alphabet stamps. So I'm starting in my 7x10 Canson Mixed Media journal. And I have a whole bunch of these vintage papers that were just leftovers from other projects that you've probably seen me doing. So I'm just arranging them underneath. Now I don't plan on going vintage per se with this page and not even really sure where I'm going to go and if I really even want some of this to show through. But if it does, it's just going to add one more layer, one more little bit of interest in there. At the very least, it provides a wonderful, wonderful texture to it. Now I am putting, using matte medium, the liquid form of it, and I'm just collaging these papers down. This page, I am not gessoing. The matte medium is serving in the same way that Jessa would to prepare the page and prepare all these papers to take whatever paint or substance color that I'm giving to it later on. So I have teal. This is the Deco Art Americana premium paint. And I am just going to get some of that color on the page. Now I've pulled out a bunch of stencils and I don't have a plan here. So there I am removing the color through the stencil. It's a technique that I, I want to get a handle on, but I'm not. Now I'm going to put the stencil back on there and I'm going to stencil some gray on there. Again, going back to the goals of the page, I want to use teal, gray, and yellow. And the reason for this is I see, I've seen people posting things with those colors and I like how it looks. So it goes kind of in the back of my mind. Hmm, I should give that a try. So today was the day as I embrace the challenge of trying something new or reusing things in your stash that you've had forever. Now, as you can see at this point, definitely ugly stage but I'm not done. I'm just going to continue layering on color. I'm mixing some of the paints with gesso. Uh, I'm liking how that feels, how that goes on. It kind of mutes it a little bit. Like I said, I just want to get lots of interest in the background. Some of the cut paint I'm put teal paint I'm putting on straight on. Some of it I'm mixing with white the, from the gesso. So now I just want to start getting some pattern down here, some initial layers. Now the vintage papers underneath they are showing through. In real life you can see that. So now I'm adding this stenciling of this sunflower Mandela stencil, and I will put a link to this stencil and any other that I use so that if you want to go and check it out and see it, what it looks like, you can do so easily. If you do shop through my links, thank you very much. I do get a small commission, but it doesn't cost you any more. So I'm liking that. That's kind of pushed back that background. It's a little bit now. So then I decide, you know, I'm going to add more gray. And I'm just applying it with my fingers. Speaking of which, thank you so much for all the well wishes that people had after I had my surgery on my hand. It's recuperating nicely. I do, you know, spend a considerable part of my day, it seems, doing the stretching exercises for the hand. I consider my working in my art journal one of those exercises. I'm not sure if that's what the physiotherapist had in mind. I was going to use this stencil. Don't worry, that one comes back. And I grabbed this maidenhair fern stencil, which I love. Now, I've never actually used it as maidenhair fur, but it has this lacy quality to it. I love the pattern that it gives. 
So I'm putting that on with the teal. I think I come in, I do some with the white or the gray as well. It's just this lacy, I like the size of it. This is a large stencil, but the size of the pattern is just perfect for a background. Now remember, I am making a background. I'm not using any of these stencils right now as a focal point. And there is no texture on this page outside of whatever the collage papers have given. But there's lots of visual texture in that things are appearing closer and in front of each other based on the colors. I think at this point I was happy with it a little bit. Now I want to introduce yellow. I know at this point that I'm going to do my finger paint florals in yellow and I knew I was going to bring in yellow but I wanted a little bit of that yellow in the background. Now one way that I typically do that is I splatter it but I pick this stencil. It's a nice small little pattern so it does it's not in your face but it is introducing that yellow into the background and that yellow will be in the focal image. That that stencil is another fast favorite of mine, Tile Mania. And I come in, as you've seen me do numerous times, I'm also stenciling with white. I often do at least two colors with the same stencil. I really like the effect and the how it all works together when you do that instead of introducing another pattern. So at this point, I'm really liking the background. I've successfully used the three colors. I've got lots of interest in the background. Some of those collage papers, vintage papers from the beginning are peeking through. Now I grab this Circle of Jewels stencil and I decide, you know, I want to add a little bit of texture to this. So I grab my extra, my gesso that has gone thick over time and I'm pushing it through the stencil. It's kind of globby. I kind of continue. I'm working really hard at not waiting for things to be so, or trying to get things so perfect. And when I did the vintage papers, that effect worked really well. You put it in the grungier, the better. At this stage, I'm not really happy with it. So I said, oh, let's see what the difference is if I just stencil gesso through here. And I'm using gesso because it's out. I could use white paint. And I like that better. I want it more contrast. That's giving me contrast and a little more pattern. So I very quickly grab a baby wipe and I'm just rubbing off that globby gesso. And that's the joy of underneath is all permanent. It's all acrylic paint. I can get rid of it. So now I'm putting them in. I like the pattern that it gives. I love the contrast that it gives. It's lightened the page. I'm happy. So I have my gesso. That is a store brand gesso from my art store, just their generic brand. And I have the gesso and I have cad yellow. And I'm taking a bit of each on my finger and applying it rather thickly in these kind of commas and just free forming a rose and I will put a link to my technique video where I show how to do this floral as well as a couple other florals finger painted florals now, I love how you can still see some of the teal through through this and there's texture there and I love the color it, the the yellow is working really well with the teal background because they're across the the color wheel from each other so they're going to look really good. I like that there's some darker yellows and lighter yellows. You're getting all sorts of shading on here very effortlessly. Now the thing with the finger paint florals is you just have to not touch it up. Put it down and keep going. Put it down, put it down. It's very painterly, very free-flowing. 
but it does look like a rose. And I am so thrilled. I mean, as I go, I keep, I add a few more details to these roses once it's dry, but I absolutely love how they turned out. And I, and I encourage you to give this a try. This is the first time I've used the thicker gesso. In the past, I've always just used titanium white in the heavy bodied acrylic. And I think I like the gesso better. So I got out my letter stamps and I will try to find a similar set online to these. And I'm starting with the middle letter. I did it on tissue paper. I was thinking I could just tish collage that on, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to stamp it on. Now in the past, when I've stamped like this, I'm not getting it perfect. And that bothered me. I'd get little lines on it. I do what I just did right there, which is overlap it. I get it too close, but I'm forcing myself to keep going. I've seen artists like Tony Burt and um, Sean Petit doing it. And theirs is not perfect, but it looks great when I look at it. And Kellyanne Roberts, they all use their stamps and I like it. So I'm thinking, okay, you know what, Karen, just let go of the idea that this has to be perfect. And maybe I'm in a different space with my art that I finally have accepted that sometimes those imperfections are what makes it look so unique and so special because I absolutely love this. Love this so much that I have an idea for a whole series. This is just a reminder, cherish every moment. Cherish the moments that during the creative process. Cherish it when it's in the ugly stage. Cherish it when it's the less than perfect stage. Using my woodless charcoal pencil and I'm shading around the outside edge. Now this is making kind of a gray, which works really well with the gray that I've put into the background. It also is, is framing my page. It reads with the, the sentiment, the stamp with the archival ink. Now I'm taking my Micron pan and I am just adding, filling in some where it was less than good coverage. I'm still not going for 100%. I'm just touching it up a little bit just to make myself happy. Now when you're doing this, when you use your Micron pan, this is a case of do as I say, not as I do. Let things dry. Because if you go on and it's wet paint or something's wet on there, you are going to cause yourself problems. This with the gesso and the thick paint is not 100% dry. So as I'm rubbing very lightly, get, trying to darken the centers, I just put, you can just see what I did. I just took off some of that because it's not dry yet. But I'm losing the light and I'm so having much, having so much fun and I want to get this done. I'm excited. This is a stamp set that I have that I actually didn't know that it was flowers to, when I first got it. I just saw the, the swirls and the curls and that's why I bought it. So I decided I'm going to use that. But you can totally free, freehand a stem and leaves. And in fact, I colorized this. I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking, I wish I had just left it right there as it is. Just the leaf stamped with the archival ink. And on another project, that's what I'll do. So what often when I'm creating, I'm getting ideas. I'm getting ideas for how to do it differently. I'm getting ideas for a spin-off, if you so to speak. A good plan is to write those down in a book because you will forget. 
Now I'm lucky because I'll have a keepsake. I have the video. I have the video footage. So I can go back and look and say, okay, what did I do? The best way to get ideas is to be actually creating because that's when I find the ideas start to flow. So I'm adding green paint. I come in and I add brown. Then I add some highlights and low lights to these leaves. As I said, in the end, I wish I had done it differently. And in fact, this leaf right at the top, I ended up wiping it off and repainting underneath it to get back some of that teal and the and the pattern that was behind it because it just it just seemed to be floating in the air. It wasn't really attached. One thing I would have done is maybe taken the leaf form and painted some of the leaves before I painted the finger paint florals on. But that's why I'm using my art journal. It's to experiment, to play, to work out these problems, to come up with the ideas that I can use when I'm making, doing on canvases or wood panels, where I'm hoping to sell my art. I come up with color combos, just try new things in a very non-threatening format. So now I'm just darkening the centers a little more before I went back with the yellow and now I've gone back with some of the brown and I'm loving that. I'm just absolutely, I cannot tell you how happy I am with the flowers. Now I'm taking my Micron pan and I'm just adding a bit of line work here. Very sketchy and again, because this is thick gesso and thick paint, it isn't completely dry so at times I'm going in and it's getting, my tip is getting wet. I've probably wrecked my pan. I'm just adding. And all these little folds on the flower are just what was created very organically, really, very naturally, just with my finger. And I am amazed at how gorgeous they are. To me, this looks like a rose. And there you can see I've gone gouged into the paint. So again, this is a technique, this line work that I've seen numerous artists doing, in, you know, on YouTube, whether it's on watercolor. And it's just never something that I've embraced or tried really with any kind of wholeheartedness. And I almost didn't do it on this, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to do it, and I absolutely love it, the effect of it. It's not really bold, but it's there. It's just adding that another layer of detail to it that makes for the finished effect. So my ugly duckling page of what started at the very beginning has definitely evolved, you know, and I'm absolutely loving it. Grab my fine liner bottle and I'm just going to dot on some little dots in the middle for the center of the flower. I think it looks like the roses. I've always loved roses. And I do grow them in our yard. Although, and I do have one that looks very similar to this. I found a scroll stamp in, in amongst my stuff. It was just a little part of a set. And I decided, you know, there was a lot of space there. It just needed that little bit of something, something extra. So 
I just put that on. It's not very bold. It's not dark, dark. It just adds that detail. So now I've grabbed my general um, charcoal pencil and I'm just applying it around these flowers and shading. Now this is this brand of charcoal pencil. It was recommended by John, Sean Petit and it's a dark color. I also have my woodless charcoal pencil. I just love the shading around it. It's very effortless, it's very easy. The only thing is if I was well, this was on a canvas and even in the art journal page, I need to spray it with a workable fixative just to set it so that it doesn't keep rubbing off on my hands or get reactivated and make a, make a smudge if I was varnishing the piece, if it was all actually on a canvas. But the ease of which I can do it far outweighs that. <clears throat> now with the charcoal pencil, if you put it somewhere and you don't like it, if you take a baby wipe, you can wipe it off. If everything underneath it is acrylic paint and is permanent then you can do that and I actually did touch this up a little bit I wasn't happy with how, what happened with the letters so I went with a baby wipe and I got rid of it so thank you so much for joining me subscribe to my channel click on the bell select the option to get notified of upcoming videos lots more planned for the new year don't forget to cherish every moment bye for now